Hi guys, I'm John Norris with Jellyfish Art. I'm the education director and biologist here. We're in Coconut Creek, Florida, and we specialize in creating moon jellyfish and tanks to house them in. Behind me, you can see some tanks with our moon jellyfish, the Arila Arita. They're all aquacultured. Nothing is taken from the wild. We did collect our first specimens from the beaches of South Florida, where we started with our polyps, and that's where we got our original population. But all the populations after that, and the generations after that, have all been aquacultured here in-house. So the moon jellyfish is what we have here. It's the easiest one to grow and it's not as difficult to keep as some of the other jellyfish out there on the market. We, have, we do the moon jellyfish also because they're very, um, not, not only hardy, but they're also very easy to keep with around children. They're not, they don't sting like some of the other jellyfish like sea nettles that some other companies are also selling. So what we do is moon jellyfish, which keeps it easy for people to maintain, easy to care for, and if they do end up having some issues or problems, they can rebound really quickly. These jellyfish have the remarkable ability to regenerate. So what we tell a lot of folks is less is better, and just keep and wait and be patient, and the jellyfish will heal. The parameters are very basic and pretty simple to what reef tanks are kept at. The pH, anywhere between 7.9 to 8.4, a little bit lower than a reef tank. The salinity is about the same. Anywhere from uh, 0.24 to 0.27 is a good range to have. The one thing to keep in mind when keeping moon jellyfish is that ammonia is a big effector in their health. Um, ammonia it can really deteriorate their bodies and can really wipe them out very quickly overnight actually. So what we do recommend is cycling the tank as you would with a reef tank. Uh, any um, you know, biological filtration on the market is really good. We use uh, what's called Jelly Bio Starter and Jelly Bio Maintain and that keeps the biological population up and making sure that you know, the water quality is nice and healthy. With any pets, it's important to understand their behaviors, just the same as with jellyfish. Even though they're brainless and spineless, they do have a little bit of personality. Uh, they'll come up to the front uh, when you're about to give them food. But the most important thing is to observe their health. Uh, observing their health is very important. Just by taking a look at them, looking at their, their, their movements, how they're swimming, uh, how they're pulsing even, is a good sign of overall health. So we offer a dry food blend, which is a mix of brine, brine shrimp and phytoplankton and a little bit of zooplankton in there as well uh, for added nutrition. And you really don't need to feed too much of that food. Um, what I like to tell people is you take a pinch, like you're taking a pinch of salt and pepper. Um, you can mix that up with a little bit of aquarium water to saturate it and then you can put it into the tank and allow the jellyfish to feed. Um, with that food, it usually takes the jellyfish anywhere from 8 to 12 hours to digest, so a minimum of feedings are really good. Another really great food for jellyfish is baby brine shrimp, live baby brine shrimp. Their egg, so egg yolks are very nutritious uh, when they're freshly hatched, so we feed those to our jellyfish as well. And it's really fun to do also um, at home or with students. You can do a brine shrimp hatchery and actually see the brine shrimp hatching, put them in the tank, they're swimming around, and the jellyfish eat them. What's really cool is you can see the jellyfish eating the brine shrimp, and the brine shrimp are alive inside the jellyfish swimming around trying to escape. Of course, there is no escape. They are doomed to be devoured and digested. But the jellyfish, they don't give out a lot of waste. Uh, they're 98% water. They're 450 million years old, so they've been doing something right to be around this long. Uh, so they really don't take too much uh, to, to, to take care of. Uh, very minimal feedings, like I said. Very minimal water changes once a week, bi-weekly. Um, very minimal maintenance compared to like a reef and, and fish tank. So what's really cool about these moon jellyfish is they don't need supplemental lighting. They don't need you know lighting like you would for corals and you know T5s or anything like that. Just basic LED with your own color scheme. You get to pick it however whatever colors you want. You can set it for the moods, you can set it for warm colors or cool colors. I like it nice and bright in the morning, kind of gets me going. It's right next to my coffee maker so I can see it. 
Um, at nighttime, you can have it at cold colors, blues and purples, uh, like behind me here. But it's really geared for however, whatever light you want to put it on. So you can have it at any colors you want. And also the flow, we've designed it to be really, really nice and, and gentle, like it would be in the ocean. So the usually in, in the natural life, uh, jellyfish will float in currents. Um, they rely on currents to swim and not so much pulsing for locomotion. They just kind of swim around, eat and sleep, kind of like what all of us would like to be doing instead of going to work every single day. But they enjoy uh, swimming uh, through the currents and just floating along and eating. And the flows are, are very minimum, not very strong at all. Um, you want it as low as possible so they can just float and not sink and be at the top. Um, so you can, they can be visible and they're not getting caught in any pumps or anything like that. But it's very minimal flow. That's why we like using uh, air pumps so it's, it's hardly any flow at all. So with stocking jellyfish in the tanks, there really isn't a rule of thumb as you would with, you know, say fish and coral, you know, one inch per gallon or this many corals per gallon. It's basically whatever the tank can handle in terms of bio load. So we always recommend starting with a small amount, either uh, smaller jellyfish or not as many jellyfish in, you know, the system that you're putting it in. And it's all based on the bio load and filtration. You can go to aquariums and uh, bigger systems and they're doing, they'll have a lot more jellyfish in there just because there's more filtration. So it's not always, you know, up to how many jellyfish you can put in a small amount of space or a large amount of space, but how much that tank can filter out and, and do the bio load and filtration. Um, so you can put you know, three to five small jellyfish in a two gallon tank, you can put up to 15 in a five gallon tank. But again, it all depends on the filtration methods that you have, how often you're doing water changes, how often you're feeding, just like you would with a reef tank, that's all gonna determine the amount of you know, animals that you can house in, in any of these tanks. So I wanna thank you all guys for tuning in, learning about jellyfish. Again, I'm John Norris from Jellyfish Art, and I really appreciate you guys listening. And yes, I am related to Chuck Norris, he's my uncle. Watch this channel.